on Saturday uh, in Manchester. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, Carl Froch's uh, trainer, Rob McCracken, to arrive. But let's forget about him. Let's concentrate uh, on everyone that is there. And we can join our MC now, Sky Sports, Adam Smith. Hello there, good afternoon, welcome to everyone live on Sky Sports News and everybody here today. I'm a little bleary-eyed myself, having watched some of Stuart Broad's five-wicket haul overnight. Stuart, a big supporter and friend of Carl Froch, no doubt will be uh, joining plenty of the sporting world, tuning in to this massive fight on Saturday night on Sky Sports box office. Watching George with... Jody Morris last night on Behind the Ropes. It's uh, really appealing to the, the big audience, and I hope everybody is enjoying the build-up on Sky. There's a special sporting name on ringside tonight as well. We have the final countdown tomorrow night, and then, of course, a huge bit of boxing starting at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. A grudge match, a super, super middleweight encounter. It's really been exciting working on this and, and the build-up as we get ready for Carl Froch and George Groves to finally settle it in the ring here in Manchester on Saturday. So let's bring in the fight promoter, Eddie Hearn, to bring the guys in. Welcome, everybody, back to Manchester. Uh, it's almost here. The talking is nearly over, but luckily enough, not quite yet. I'd like to welcome, to say a few words, the challenger from Hammersmith, St. George Groves. Thank you, Eddie. Um... I'm very excited to be here. This is um, an opportunity for me to become world champion, something that I've dreamt about for a long time and I've put a lot of hard work into. And uh, I know I'm ready. I know this is my time. I couldn't be in a better place. I couldn't have had a better training camp. And uh, I cannot wait for Saturday night and show everyone that this is where I belong and I'm going to be world champion. Thank you, George. And uh, Carl? WBA, IBF champion, a few words. Yeah, I'm here again. Um, thanks for the turnout. Big thanks to Eddie Hearn at Matchroom. Um, my coach, Robert McCracken, I owe him a massive thanks. He, he, he gets me in the shape I need to be in to perform time and time again at this top level. And um, for me, this is what boxing is all about, big time boxing on Sky Sports, the best platform out there for, for British boxing. And it's, it's an honor and it's a proud moment for me to be involved in an event of this magnitude. I'm really, really looking forward to just doing the business on Saturday night now. Um, everything's gone to plan. I feel great, I feel sharp. Rob McCracken's in the house, so I'm, <laughs> I'm happy about that. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to fighting in Manchester. It's a different venue for me. I've boxed in Nottingham so many times. I've boxed all over the world, stateside. And um, my last fight at the O2, O2 Arena in London was, was just an unbelievable uh, event and uh, something I'll never, ever forget, the rematch with Mikel Kessler. And it was received very well by everybody. The, you know, everybody, everybody loved that fight. Everybody I speak to, they loved the whole event. And um, that's what boxing's about, big time boxing. It's, it's an event now. And uh, for me, like I've said, I'm just very proud to be headlining such a big event. And um, what can I say? I'm sharp, I'm fit, I'm fast. I'm healthy. I've got the best coach in the business in my corner. And um, I'm just looking forward to doing the job on George Groves on Saturday night. He's had a lot to say. You've all heard what he's had to say. It's been quite embarrassing, to be honest. Um, it's been cringy listening to it and reading some of his comments. Apparently, he's going to reveal how to beat me today. So I'll look forward to that one. Um, good luck with that one. And um, yeah, over to you guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Carl. We're going to go straight to Fraser Dainton from Sky Sports News for some questions. Thanks, Eddie. Um, George, I'll start with you. Carl's just mentioned it. You've been saying that you're going to reveal the plan for us today. Would you like to go ahead? Yeah, sure. I figured uh, Carl keeps saying that I'm lying as such. You know, I'm not confident when I say I'm confident. I'm not ready when I say I'm ready. I think he believes that I'm going to get in there and run from him, but Carl, you're wrong. I'm going to come out, I'm going to meet you. Centre of the ring, first round. And I'm going to win the jab exchanges. And I'm going to hit you with two right hands. Just two. Just to let you know, whenever I want, I can hit you with a right hand. Second round, I'm going to come out, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take the centre of the ring. I'm going to win the jab exchanges. And I'm going to hit him with more right hands. Third round, I'm going to come back. Come out, and I'm going to push him back. I'm going to push him on his back foot. And then after the third round, Carl, 
You're going to have to see what's coming next. It's all down to you from there. Carl, your reaction to that? Oh, I'm very surprised that he's um, come up with that little game plan in, in the short space of time. It's been 10 weeks, Carl. Oh, 10 weeks, OK. I, I wasn't like expecting then. a response, so I'm going to get... He's going to come to the centre of the ring and he's going to hit me with two... Was it two right hands? Yes, so the first, one, the first one's not going to do any damage, so he's going to hit me with another one. I'm going to sit there and let him do that. So, you know, stupendous again from George Groves. Over to you. Carl, there's been so much talked about in terms of the difference in age, the difference in class of the fighters that you've uh, fought before, the difference in whether George or not is chinny. For your money, what are the main factors that are going to define this fight? I think my experience at top level, my punching power, and George Groves' lack of ability to be able to take a punch is going to be the reason that he's not going to do what he just said he's going to do. It's going to be the reason he's going to come in the ring, run for his life, jab and grab, and try and get through it. He's not going to stand and fight. And uh, regardless of what he chooses to do, I'll win the fight, whether it be on points because he's running for his life or whether it be by knockout because he decides to stand and have a fight with me, which would be a big, big mistake. But I'm really hoping he does come out to the centre of the ring and have a fight with me because I am. that's exactly what we want. You Perfect. It. Brilliant. You've heard it here first. George, your reaction to that? Uh, I'm chinny, I'm chinny, but I have never been, never been knocked out, 19 and 0, unbeaten, but I am chinny. Um, Carl's got one punch knockout power, <clears throat> and yet he doesn't really knock everyone out, does he? He goes to points quite a lot. We've seen him do 12 rounds a fair amount of times. And what was it, what was the other thing you mentioned, Carl? Sorry, I forgot. What was the other, what was the other key, key factor in this fight? No, I can't remember, George. Uh, can't... Me neither. He said, he said the same stuff so often. Um, and he's contradicted himself so often that uh, it's hard to follow with what, um, wherever Carl's coming at. I've come here today to do him a favour, tell him exactly what I'm going to do. So I hope, hope on fight night, Carl, you take my good advice and you, uh, you make some adjustments towards it. Well, we can train good. for that now. I'm coming out in round one. I'm going to get ready for the double right you're hand. Gonna, you're going to train for that, yeah? The double right hand. So I'll just you get my left glove up. Brilliant. I know what to do. Thank you. You've got 48 hours. Ridiculous, that's all I can say. Embarrassing. What's pathetic. What's pathetic? You are. Why? Because what you're saying, what you've been saying for the last 10 weeks. What have I been saying for 10 weeks? Well, I'm going to go through it all. You know, just read up some of your, um, your own me. words. It's pathetic. Tell me. You've embarrassed cause... yourself, and on Saturday night, I'm going to get a chance to put it right. And trust me, I'll put it right. You're in a world of trouble, and you're going to learn some respect. And you're going to... some respect. What respect, Carl? Listen, you're getting... Define respect. You're getting annihilated on Saturday night. Everybody knows it. I know it, and you know it. I can tell by, you know, you can see by the look in your eyes, you know it. I know by looking at you, you know you're going to get flattened. That's that, it. What, That's the end of the story. What, what have I said? What, what implication, implications are you getting from me now that would make you think that I know it? I'm not going to start getting into a, a silly debate. You what just if started this debate. I'm oh. asking you a question. And you the, can't... You're just, you're just giving me empty words as What's usual. the question, George? What's the question? You just said... You can see it in my eyes. Yeah. You can see it in okay. my body language. So what, what do you want me what? to say? What are you asking me? I'll give you an answer. What exactly about me gives you this confidence? Because I don't see it. That's not a question. Over to you, Fraser. George, if I can ask you just one more. There has been such a psychological battle going on between <clears> you. <throat> Do you feel as if... He's fighting first with of himself, all, you're... psychologically. He's fighting with himself. And he's losing. How can you lose yourself? I'm sitting here, I'm answering his questions. I'm asking him questions and, and he falls apart. He's happy to rant and rave and call me disrespectful and this and that. And as soon as I pull him on it, he goes, oh, I don't want to get into a, I don't want to get into a debate. Like, it makes no sense, Carl. Makes when no you've sense mixed whatsoever. the level I've mixed at and been confronted with the opponents I've been faced with, the, the you know the different level of opposition, and the level I've been facing for the last last three four years have been world class opposition, and these these world class fighters conduct themselves with a better class, a bit of dignity. You know, they say the right things. You're a fighter, Carl, because you said you was going to kill someone They say the right things. Where are you pulling that one out of the bag from? You know what I mean? Can you just pipe, well, pipe before down? Before your last fight, you told, you told everyone at a press conference you was going to kill your opponent. Didn't the board in, have to investigate that? You know what? There's true, an old Carl? saying, you can't argue with stupid. So I'm not going to argue because it's Carl, just... Carl, I've just it, asked you something a dead horse. Horse. and are you denying it? The job I'm going to do on Saturday night is going to be a very pleasurable one, not just for me, but for all the fans and all the viewing public. So sit down and enjoy it, because this guy's getting absolutely flattened. I promise you that, and I guarantee you that. He's getting whooped. Simple as that. I've got no more to say. I can't argue with him. He's just, you know... You can't argue with me, can you? Because 
It's embarrassing. As soon as I ask you something, you fall to pieces, Carl. I fall to pieces. You've heard it yourself. The, yeah. the, the level of opposition our boxer, you know, world championship fight after world championship fight against class quality opposition. The only guy to beat me on my 33 career record who I've not beaten is Andre Ward, who's pound for pound number two. He'll probably never get beat for his whole career. And I fall apart and I'm trying to look for positives and I'm, I'm, I'm scared and I'm, I'm confused. It's all pathetic and ridiculous. And that's the good thing about boxing, because on Saturday night, I get to put it straight. Just enjoy it. Gentlemen, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. I think we're going to leave it uh, there for the moment on Sky Sports News, but uh, thank you very much indeed for answering our questions. Pleasure. What a wonderful... It really was a uh, great, great um, press conference, but now they're going head-to-head -head in Manchester. Let's see uh, how the two are going to uh, fare. And we mentioned uh, earlier on, unfortunately, uh, yeah, those pictures are frozen. We can see the, uh, the close-up shot of uh, Carl Froch. Johnny Nelson mentioned earlier on about whether he wanted to make eye contact with George Groves uh, because he hadn't been doing so, especially on that ringside when they met uh, earlier on uh, ahead of the fight. Um, be interesting to see how they how they do when they do go head to head uh, very very shortly if and when they do so. George Groves very confident, he very is. calm, and just trying to call out Carl Froch. You know, mm. basically saying, look, if you can't answer any of your questions, what did he say? He said um, he's fighting with himself. Yeah. He's fighting with himself and losing. How can you lose to yourself? <laughs> Which it'll be very interesting mm. if that plays on the mind. Uh, of Carl Froch, basically uh, George Groves saying that he can't even win uh, an argument uh, with himself. He's got his two belts on there. This is the, uh, the difference between the two. Uh, George Groves is the IBF mandatory challenger. He's going for the IBF title and also the WBA belt, which uh, Carl is proudly uh, just um, draping over his two shoulders. It's easier said than done, as you can see. Um, Eddie Hearn is going to be the... Uh, the uh, sort of the moderator between them as they uh, go head to head for this uh, face off. I wonder if uh, there is going to be any uh, sparks that fly. Here they go. Are they going to go eyeball to eyeball in a moment's time? I think this is for the, uh, the photographers, first of all. Just that shot. Carl Froch looking uh, pretty confident. And they bear to look at each other. Yeah. Eye to eye, will words be spoken? Will there be a whisper into the ear? And the last time, Frotch said that his breath smelt. Yeah. There'll be a bit of that going on again. Yeah, I mean, the accusations of childish uh, behaviour from Carl Frotch uh, towards George Groves have been interesting because there has been, to be honest, quite a lot of um, childish words between the two of them. They've both been going toe to toe, and the war of words has been so intriguing. Here we go. Eyeball to eyeball, Carl Froch, the WBA and IBF super middleweight title holder up against the mandatory challenger, George Groves, who isn't shying away from the eye contact. Carl Froch is the one who has looked away, and George Groves continues to look and continues to say a, a whole array of things into the ears of uh, Carl Froch, who's responded. Let's just listen in. Makes sense. Anything unbelievable about what I'm saying, you're getting absolutely flattered. Can't wait. I love my job. Good. 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 Saturday night, you get a chance to do something about this. You can do anything about me. You're getting flat and knocked out. Simple as that. You know it, no. You know it. You know you're getting flat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm about. You know what I've, you know what I've done. You're pretty bad. Right. <laughs> Double right hand, round one. You promise? Are you going to stand and fight me in round one? Let's have a fight, round one. Yeah? Brilliant. Can't wait. All right, guys. Yeah, lovely. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go.
Uh, if there were any uh, words that offended you there, uh, do apologise. It's a uh, very um, hot atmosphere in Manchester. Head-to-head -head between Carl Froch and George Groves. We'll have uh, much more reaction and we'll be speaking live to both fighters uh, a little bit later on this afternoon. So we saw uh, Carl Froch and George Groves go head-to-head -head in their news conference ahead of their super middleweight bouts at Manchester uh, on Saturday. Uh, we can speak live now to Carl Froch, the WBA and IBF super middleweight champion. Uh, after that news conference, uh, how are you feeling, Carl, after that? I'm feeling good, feeling very confident and um, I've seen a chink in George's armour. I don't actually think... He believes in what he's saying. Up until now, I thought he actually believed in his own stupidity and his, his own childish remarks, and he, he sort of had a game plan, but he's revealed himself to me today as, as being a very worried man, and I think the big fight's dawning on him now. It's getting closer and closer to fight, fight night, and um, I think he's realising he's in really, really deep water, and he's in serious trouble. He cannot mix it with me, especially at this level. He cannot. It's impossible. He might have two or three rounds, and in four rounds of keeping out of the way, jabbing and moving and make it look like a fight. But he knows once we start exchanging leather up close and w this, this fight becomes a fight, he's out of his depth and he's in serious trouble. And I could see that today in his, in his, in his eyes. I could see it in his body language. And the stuff he was saying was, again, pathetic, bringing up old stuff and bringing up irrelevant stuff from the past that, 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 that there's no relevance on the fight. So I'm coming away from this press conference feeling very, very even more confident than what I was to start with. And um, looking forward even more to absolutely giving George Groves a pasting on Saturday night because that's what I do. Now he said, I give people like him a pasting for the cheek. <laughs> now he said um, going into the, the news conference that he was going to reveal what his plan uh, was going to be. And I suppose give him credit, he did go through through the first three rounds and say exactly what he was going to do. What did you make of that? Do you think it's just a big bluff? I thought it was very strange, actually, because it was quite a precise step-by-step um, -step, um, diagnostic of what he's going to do, come out behind the jab, and he's going to land a double right hand, and then he's going to go into round two and get behind his jab, and he's going to take me on in the centre of the ring. I can't fully remember what he said, but it, it was just ridiculous, to be honest. Again, it was, it was more ridiculous words and stupidness coming from George Groves, because you can't, you, can't, you can't put that sort of detailed explanation of of the fight tactics from round one through to round three because you don't know what your opponent's going to do. So, again, I just have to... The noise that he makes goes in one ear and out the other. I'm looking forward to sat Saturday. Um, and I'm hoping that one of his tactics that he's talked about, which is take me on, stand in the middle of the ring and have a fight with me, he, he stands by and he does have a fight with me because that's exactly what I want. Do you feel that... At all, I mean, you should be giving more credit to George Groves considering the fact that he is unbeaten and you've lost two fights. Well, I'm giving him plenty of credit in the sense that he's an unbeaten fighter and he's, he's, he's mandatory, I know by default, but he's number five for the IBF. But it's not about giving him credit because he's boxed at domestic level for his whole career and he's been in razor tight decisions. You know, he's struggled at domestic level. When I was British champion fighting at domestic level, I cleaned up. Everybody got knocked out quite simply and um, I moved on to world class level. And the gulfs apart, it's like the difference between Division One and the Champions League is the massive, the speed, the power, the fitness, the, the tactics, you know, the, the ability. Everything is different at world level. And George Groves has never been at world level and he's struggled at domestic level. And that's what's important here. So I've got to give him respect as a fighter and I've got to take him seriously, which is why I've had a 12 week training camp and I've done what I've done and prepared diligently for this fight. But no, I don't need to give him any respect for, for the person he's being and for the rubbish that comes out of his mouth. All I need to do is absolutely punish him and close his mouth. And that's what I'm going to be doing on Saturday night. Make no mistake. Now, we were watching you do the head-to-head, -head, and I don't know if you, you when you see other fighters um, doing these head-to-heads, if you ever read anything into them. But to be fair to George Groves, his gaze didn't change, did it? It didn't move, and you did look away. Does that mean anything? Looking away doesn't mean anything. To be honest, I'm not being horrible either, but he's, he's got halitosis. Um, and it's a condition that's, that's not nice to be stood in front of. And I'm, I'm not honestly not being malicious or vicious in that sense. I'm telling the truth. Um, and 
I don't know, he might even tell you that himself, that he's got a condition that needs sorting out. And that's the reason I was looking away, because I can only bear it for so long. But looking away at press conferences, or he looked away first, he's got the upper hand, I've scored one point over him. To me, George Groves looked worried. I don't know what he was looking at, but I could see the glare, the glare in his eyes. His voice was trembling, and he looked more nervous today than he's looked on a whole build-up. Today, actually, I didn't believe what he was saying. Usually, I believed him, and I thought, you know what? He's saying stuff, and he's going to beat me, and he's going to try and knock me out, and he's got a game plan and tactics. And I was sort of thinking, he actually believes in himself, which is good, because he might come and have a fight. But today, he showed a chink in his armour. I thought he looked worried. I thought he looked like a, a, you know, a kid who was trying to snitch on me to his headmaster about something I'd said in the past. He ran out of things to say, and he looked worried to me. I've got to be totally honest. I, I mean, you call him a kid. He is obviously 11 years younger than you, and that potentially could give him an advantage. Or, or does experience talk in these sort of situations? And that age thing is, is completely a, a red herring, and, it, and the fact that he might have more in his legs isn't something that will have an impact on the fight. No, I think, I think the age thing can be a big factor if, if fitness is a problem, but... For me, at 36, I'm very much in my peak. I'm in my physical peak. Um, so the age on that sense is a massive advantage for me because he's, he's, got, he's so inexperienced at, at this level. He's never, ever boxed at this level. So, you know, the fact that he's 26 and I'm 36, or he's 25 and I'm 36, is, is going to be no relevance on the night other than the fact that I've got masses of experience at world title level, at top, top level against top fighters. You've only got to look at my last 10 fights and see who I've boxed, see who I've been involved in, in, in top-level fights with, and then compare it with George's Groves's, and you'll see the golfing class. And um, that's what will show on Saturday night. That will be the difference, not any youth or enthusiasm or stupidness. I mean, he's very naive, and he's probably going to maybe have a go at times. When he's finished running and jabbing and trying to grab and get through the fight, he will have to stand and have a go, because he's got to try and come and win these two world titles off me. Um, and when he does do that, that's when he gets flattened. Just a, a quick word on how he's um, preparing. Uh, I don't know if you caught it, but when he was doing his, um, his training uh, the other day uh, at Westfield, uh, he decided he's changed his T-shirts. He's put Groves ahead of Frotch. Obviously, you're top billing, you're the, you're the world champ, but he's changed those things around. Does that, is that just a, a technique to try and get under your skin? And is he getting under your skin at all, just a little bit? Possibly. He's trying to get under my skin. He's putting Groves v Frotch, but I've seen it and heard it all before. I mean, that, that's, that's irrelevant. Groves, Frotch, Frotch, Groves. It's, it's a billing. It's a title billing. He's already showed quite clearly that he's got absolutely zero respect for his sport of boxing and zero respect for, for a guy that's... You know, I conduct myself with, with pride and dignity and honour every single time I fight. And the previous fighters that I've boxed at world level, Mikel kessler Butte, um, you know, Arthur Abraham, Andre Ward, Andre Durrell, these top-level fighters, they all conduct themselves with a bit of class. And George Groves is classless. He's trying to downplay my achievements. He's trying to put Groves v. Frotch. He can't even call me Carl when I, when I did a show the other day on ringside. He calls me Frotch and Frotchy um, and says it would be rude to call me anything else. No, it wouldn't. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be nice to call me Mr. Frotch or call me by my first name, Carl. But he thinks that's funny and he thinks it's clever and he thinks it's getting under my skin. And as you've asked, is he getting under my skin? No, he's not getting under my skin at all. He's actually putting a smile on my face because I'm really, really looking forward to Saturday night and doing the job on him. He's motivated me for the last 10 weeks because of his bad attitude. And um, for me, I'm just going to set the record straight Saturday night. So I enjoy it because, you know, I don't think it's going to last that long unless he does run and hold and jab and try and nick through the rounds and lose every round, which is what will happen. This fight's going to be over very, very quick because I punch very hard and he's got a glass jaw. And I just think as soon as I start connecting on his chin, he's going to be all over the place and the fight's going to be over. So he's already mapped out the, the fight. He said by you know, his, his plan uh, that it's going to at least go four rounds. What, what's your prediction around and when you're going to knock him down? Well, I'm realistic. And if George Groves decides to run and hold and jab and get through the fight, the fight could go 12 rounds and it could be... It could be potentially um, a, d a dull affair, but I don't think he's going to try and run all night long. I think 100% he's definitely going to try and box and move early on. He's going to use his jab, use the movement, and um, try and get through the first few rounds, get a bit of confidence, settle into it. That would be the sensible thing to do. But once, like I said earlier, once he starts to engage in battle, and once we start landing shots, you know, I, ex I expect to get hit with the odd shot, 
and I expect to land quite a few shots because I land on world-class opposition, so I'm certainly going to land on George Groves. And George Groves gets hit. If you watch any of his previous fights, he gets hit. His defence isn't very good. He walks into shots. He gets hit with shots on his back foot. So as soon as I start connecting with my heavy hands, um, the fight's going to just explode into a, into, a, into a great tear up that won't last very long. I just think I'm going to knock him out within, within seven, eight rounds. I really do. Just one final question, Carl. It's obviously intriguing watching fighters uh, before the fight going head to head, uh, the trash talk, etc. But then often after the fight has finished, you see hugs and kisses and it's uh, smiles and hugs and you know, mutual respect. Is that likely to happen come the uh, bell or, or the, the 12th happen. round? No chance. No, unless, unless I get an apology, which I don't think I'm going to be um, holding my breath for. Um, there's absolutely no way, and you can, you can play this back after the fight if you want. There's no way I'm going to show George Groves any sort of remorse for, for what I've done to him. He's not going to be getting my handshake, he's not going to be getting a hug, he's not going to be getting any of that. If you look at Mikel Kessler and I in the last fight, there was a lot of respect on the build-up. We're actually friends outside the ring. I know he lives in Denmark and I live in England, but we're two class operators. And, you know, at the end of the fight, I raised my arms in the air, he raised his arms in the air, and the first thing we did instinctively was embrace each other and say, great fight, are you all right, how are you? Whether, you know, it was nice, it was a nice moment, and it was nice that Mikel Kester saw the final bell. But I can't wait to flatten George Groves. I really can't wait to put a shot into him. I, you know, I enjoy my job so much because I get to settle the score with these on fight night, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. And when I've done it, I'll still tell him what I think of him. I'm not going to shake his hand and give him a kiss and a hug and say, oh, don't worry, you'll come back. You, 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 you might be able to do something in future when I retire because I don't like the guy. And I'm going to show you on Saturday night how much I don't like the guy.